Unsolved Mysteries. Out of deference to persons who may still be living, character names in some of these true unsolved mysteries have been changed. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, a remarkable and somewhat ghastly piece of fiction written by the famous Robert Louis Stevenson. Fantastic, but utterly impossible, you say. Fantastic, yes. Ghastly, yes. But impossible? No. For a Jekyll and Hyde complex was the answer to the crimes which horrified and terrified London in the late 80s. The famous Jack the Ripper murders. scene is London. The time, evening. A thick rolling fog shrouds the Thames embankment, and the lights lining Blackfriars Bridge have a ghostly tinge. High in the fog, Big Ben booms the hour, and over at Scotland Yard, Detective Lester, hearing the familiar chime of the old bell, looks at his watch, decides that it is time to be off, and is closing his desk when the door opens and in walk a man and a woman. Yes, what can I do for you? My name's Weiss, James Weiss, and yes, this is my wife. I'm delighted to meet you. Won't you sit down? Thank you, sir, but you see... I made James come and see you. Yes? James had a dream. Yes, one does have dreams occasionally. But are you quite certain you came to the right place? This is Scotland Yard. Oh, yes, this is the right place. Tell them about your dream, James. Last night it was, sir. I wakened and told my wife. I saw a murder committed. You what? In my dream, I mean. Oh, I see. Well, I admit that's rather a horrible dream, but... But it was too real. In Spitzfield, it was. I could see the woman walking along, and I could see the man following her. I tried to warn her. I tried as hard as I could. It was ghastly to watch her just walking along like everything was all right, and him creeping up behind her, and me trying to cry out and couldn't. And then he killed her. She didn't have a chance, not even a chance to scream. Wait, wait. You'll have me turning out the yard. You're so realistic. You'll have me believing that it happened instead of being just a dream. But that's just it. When James dreams things like that, they have happened. But this time, James must be wrong. Because, you see, we haven't found any murdered women in London, let alone Spitzfield. I told you they wouldn't listen, Margaret. Let's get going. I don't wish to appear unappreciative, but you realize, don't you, that I can't do anything. After all, what would my superiors say if I arrested someone because of a dream? Yes, I understand. Sorry to have taken up your time. Good night, madam. Good night. Next morning, Detective Inspector Lester walks into his office at Scotland Yard. He hangs up his hat and coat, seats himself at his desk lifts up the morning report and starts to read. Suddenly he stops. His eyes start from his head. He reads again, then turns stuttering to his secretary. What, what the do? What is this, a joke? A joke, sir? What, Report sir? of a woman found murdered in Spitzfield. There's nothing to joke about there, sir. She was a horrible sight. Ripped to pieces, sir. Never even had a chance to cry out. But, but it's impossible. Impossible, sir? What's impossible about it, sir? The body's in the morgue if you want to go and look at it. Although I don't advise it, sir. It's a messy one, and I've seen lots of them. Who investigated? Brown, sir. Get him in. Yes, sir. What time was she found? Three o'clock. You wanted me, sir? Any progress on this murder in Spitzfield, Brown? Not yet, sir. Know who she is or was? Oh, yes. Just one of the many women around that neighborhood at that time of night. No motive, then, so far? No, there isn't a clue as to who could have murdered her. Not a thing. Nobody heard a scream, although I don't think she had a chance to scream. All right, Brown. Get a hold of McCarthy and have him search London until he finds a chap by the name of uh, James Weiss and his wife, Margaret. I want them here. I want them as quickly as you can find them. Yes, sir. But James Weiss and his wife, Margaret, were not to be found. 
And the body lying in the morgue was not the only one Scotland Yard was to view in the following months. London was in a state of panic. Hardly a week passed that a woman was not found brutally and horribly murdered. The newspapers called the unknown fiend Jack the Ripper. And women were advised not to walk alone after dark in the Whitechapel district, where the majority of the crimes were committed. But one day, all unmindful of the police search for him, James Weiss and his wife returned from their trip to the continent, board a bus at Notting Hill in the very heart of London. Piper, Piper, sir! London, there are guns, Piper! Bears, please. Piper. Step forward in the bus, please. Bears, please. Uh, Tuppence to Marble Arch, sir. Yes, sir. Why, what's the matter, James? You, you look ill. I've got that feeling I had that night I had the dream. What do you mean? The man I saw kill the woman. He's on the bus. Oh. I know it. I feel it. Look around. Get a grip on yourself. In the opposite corner. He's getting off. Quick, James. Quick, follow him. But the stranger got into a cab and was driven off. Weiss appealed to a policeman who only laughed at him when he asked for the stranger's arrest. That night, another Jack the Ripper murder. And in the morning's papers, Weiss reads that the police are looking for him. Before London is astir, Weiss is at Scotland Yard, and the inspector and two sergeants take the clairvoyant to the scene of the latest killing. Now, Mr. Weiss, this is where the murder was committed. Do you... Look at him. Quiet. He... He's going into a trance. He's tearing off into space. He's starting to walk. Through the maze of London's streets walks the strange group. Mile after mile, Weiss follows the psychic trail, never hesitating until they reach the West End. Then, outside an imposing house, Weiss stops, staggers. His glazed eyes turn imploringly to the inspector as again he staggers and almost falls to the ground. Look out there. Catch him. What's the matter? Are you all right? In there, in that house, the murderer, the man you want, Jack the Ripper. All right, boys. We'll take a chance. Be ready for fireworks. Maybe we're on a wild goose chase. Does seem kind of... Someone's coming. Yes, gentlemen. We're police officers. We wish to search this house. Come in. I... I suppose there's no use hiding it any longer. Well, no, madam. No use hiding it any longer. The doctor's insane. When he's in his right mind, he's the kindest man alive. But when this other thing takes hold of him, there's no saying what he might do. I've lived in constant dread. I've been afraid that, that he might even commit murder. Then you... you don't know who he is? I mean, why we are here? Who he is? Why, he's Dr. Blank. I am Mrs. Blank. He's in there. And Dr. Blank he was, when in his right mind... But when his dual personality took hold of him, he became Jack the Ripper, the monstrous fiend who killed for the love of killing. A group of eminent British doctors examined him, and when it was definitely decided that he was insane, he was committed to an asylum, and all were sworn to secrecy. His death was announced to account for his disappearance, and surely that mock funeral attended by the prominent people of London was one of the strangest rites that old city ever witnessed. A strange, fantastic rite and a fitting close to the unsolved mystery of Jack the Ripper. In just a moment, you will hear a solution to the clairvoyant's extraordinary trance. Ladies and gentlemen, inasmuch as any solution must of necessity be supposition, liberties of time, place, and characters have been taken in the solution for which you have been waiting. It is many years after the famous Jack the Ripper murders, and Detective Inspector Lester is discussing the Ripper case with a well-known London editor, now dead. You see, Tom, the Ripper case isn't the only case where we've had the 
yard use a clairvoyant. And this clairvoyant has helped us out when we couldn't find a starting place. Of course, well, it just doesn't do to let that sort of thing get spoken about in the papers. Uh, what other keys can you tell me of? Well, it was the Crumbles case. We were at a dead end. A medium was consulted and she described the murderers. But more than that, she told us where they were living. The rest and proof were simple. What, there must be some explanation to such peculiar happenings? Yes, there is. Look at it this way. Mediums or clairvoyants, I don't particularly care what they're called, make a practice of going into a trance so many times that they become more and more susceptible. I mean that there are times when, merely because they're not thinking about anything in particular, their minds are open to suggestion, although at that particular time they may not be aware of it. Yes, I can understand that. Now, here is a peculiar thing. What emotion, next to an effort to save one's life, do you think is uppermost in nine persons out of ten who are murdered? Why, I never gave that a thought. What is? An overpowering desire to have the police know who killed them. Now, that desire for, well, call it revenge, coupled with fear of discovery of the murderer, produces a tremendously powerful thought wave which is received by a clairvoyant who is receptive to suggestion at the moment. Yeah, almost like a radio set which has been left switched on and tuned to a station which is off the air. Suddenly the station comes on the air and the message is received, huh? Pretty good explanation. Yes, I accept all this. But how was Weiss seeing the murder at Spitzfields before it was even committed? Weiss was more than an ordinary clairvoyant. He was fully susceptible to the subconscious mind. And the subconscious has no measurement of time. Past, present, or future is all one to the subconscious. And therefore... To the subconscious, it made no difference whether the murder was committed, was being committed, or was to be committed. In other words, the trances that mediums have that are apparently meaningless would not be meaningless if they could be linked up with the proper time, the right place, and people affected. Exactly. In the Jack the Ripper case, the Crumbles case, and half a hundred others that I know of, the ordinary law of coincidence permits a certain number of occurrences in which all the elements are present. And that results in a workable application of clairvoyance. Amazing, isn't it, to think about? Amazing, yes. Because we don't understand it. But someday... Yes? Someday, when the police of the world wake up to the value of this study, catching criminals will be a simple matter. But when that day comes, criminals will be few and far between. Why? Because criminals, too, will be able to see and to know what awaits them. If not in this world, then in the next... Thank you.